How did I turn this into this? Let me show you. My name's Michelle Tevenel, artist from Saskatchewan, Canada. And this is how I created these wildly unique abstract wood sculptures. It began with the creative idea that I sketched on paper, a rough vision of what I imagined the sculptures to be. It's a starting point in the creative process. Sometimes the artwork stays very close to the sketch and sometimes it changes significantly along the way and it's all part of the creative flow. Then I gathered the wood. I collect salvage logs for the purpose of wood carving and save them for just the right project. A bunch of spruce and willow stumps were hanging around and they're just right to create the basis for these new sculptures. I used a jaw horse to clamp and hold the stumps in place and used a chainsaw to cut the stumps into squared or rectangular shape to form the design concept that I had in mind. Then I used an angle grinder with a coarse flat sander disc to smooth them down. The next step was to make them look aged and darkened. I pulled out my tiger torch, which is a large propane torch, and I burned and charred the outside of the stumps. I made sure to do this on a non-flammable gravel surface and had a water hose nearby just in case I had any flare-ups. The burning created a beautiful effect with a crackled, aged charcoal surface, but the charred surface can be brittle and messy and has a lot of ash on it, so I used a wire brush to knock off the excess. This was done outside and the directional breeze blew the ash away from my face. In different conditions, wearing a mask would definitely be a good idea to prevent breathing in that ash. The wire brush revealed this gorgeous natural wood character that's weathered to appear almost like aged railway ties. My vision for the project was to embrace and bring attention to the natural cracks, the irregularities and unique characteristics of the logwood. And this method brought out that natural beauty. The wood bases were blown off with compressed air and then brushed with three coats of marine spar urethane. This type of sealer is excellent for outdoor display if desired, but it could also work for indoor display too. After the sealer was dry, I installed nail-in furniture slider feet to the bottom of the bases. This keeps the sculpture up off the ground so water doesn't pool underneath. It helps level the base and it makes it easier to move around. On to carving the upper sculpture portions. I use leftover bits of, from my wood pile to work with and I just followed their shape and size as natural inspiration to create with. A small chainsaw was just right to block out the general shapes. I used both a stock chainsaw bar and a cannon carving bar. The bulk of the excess material was removed and it created the roughed out shapes. For the rest of the shaping and detailing, I put my ArborTech power carving unit and mini carver to work. In this stage, I really liked using the turboplane attachment for smooth, freeform sculpting and shaping. The sanding pad attachment was used to smooth down the surface with coarse and fine grit sanding. The ArborTech mini carver is a little dream worker when it comes to working into these smaller details. On this piece, I used it to carve out the ripple effects. Between the curved lines, hollowing out, shaping, it is so easy to use with fast, efficient, and smooth material removal. I especially appreciate this extra handle on it that helps provide extra control and leverage. Really easy to handle. After the mini carving stage was done, I switched over to the mini sander attachment to go over the entire surface to smooth it out. For the larger sanding areas, such as the sides and the backs of this piece, 
I used my angle grinder with a coarse flap sanding disc followed by a finer grit with a palm sander. To really reach into the last nooks and crannies along the ripple edges, I used a mop sander attachment on a drill. On this water droplet piece, here I was smoothing out the surface using the turboplane attachment. And then I had some surprise visitors. Sometimes these little critters are burrowed into the log lid. They're kind of gross, but you gotta deal with them. Bug treatment happens in two steps. First, I spray insecticide inside of all the little holes, cracks, and crevices. And secondly, I put the wood pieces under a tarp and use a fogger insecticide to fumigate them overnight. That usually does the trick. On this next piece, the details were brought out with the Mini Pro attachment the precision barrel cutter, and the mini sander attachment. Here's an example of them in action. Most of my carving work was done outside to keep the mess outdoors with minimal cleanup. But you can see the inside of my workshop still gets cluttered up through the creative process. Planning how these pieces would all go together took some extra shop time, drilling holes, chest fitting, preparing for paint and stain. Because there was a possibility these sculptures may be used outdoors, I chose to use oil-based wood stains and paints to add color and contrast on these sculptures, and then varnished with outdoor rated sealer. Small hardware details like these spikes were fit into drilled holes and glued with clear super glue. Steel rods were coated with a spray clear coat, cut to length, test fitted and adjusted until level. They were glued in place using construction adhesive and shimmed with small wooden depth skewers if minor adjustments were needed. Once everything was dry, touched up and cleaned up, it was time to take some pictures of these sculptures. I live in Saskatchewan where minus 30 degrees Celsius is pretty normal in the winter, so I guess I'm kind of used to working in the cold. Natural light and natural surroundings can make for great pictures, so I hauled these sculptures into the yard for some winter photos. They really popped against the crisp white snow and the echoed the elements of nature where they came from. I named this collection Uncommon Sense. While the pieces may seem abstract at first, they actually have very specific meanings and representations. With these sculptures, I visualized the concept of sensory overwhelm. As a person with sensory processing differences, the world can be experienced in a way that is exaggerated, overwhelming, and sometimes painful. It's a neurological difference in how the brain processes stimuli from the environment around a person. It's feeling things differently, sensing things differently, being hypersensitive to sights, sounds, smells, textures, and so on. Life for me is a bit different than most, but it is an invisible condition not easily recognized or understood by others. It is an uncommon way of sensing the world around me. This collection, Uncommon Sense, brings awareness and acceptance of sensory processing differences. It features unique characteristics, fractured experiences, exaggerated senses, boldness and brilliance, and the unique perspective of the world that it stems from the sensory processing differences that I experience. Each sculpture represents a sensation, a feeling, a place, 
an experience. The cracks within the wood are an intentional design feature that represents the external and internal pressures that build through changes in the environment. Pressure builds until a transformational crack releases the tension. It can be disruptive, painful, and life-changing, but the cracks don't have to be viewed as flaws. They can be embraced as beauty in the broken. They echo an honest truth of what real life is like. And through these shared fractured experience, the wood and I co-create authentic and raw, honest works that connect human nature and wild nature. This is Home Petrichor Repose Isolation Caffeine Adrenaline Social Resistance and Resonance A Collection of Uncommon Sense.